There's a reason archaeologists still pause when they talk about Neanderthal fire. These weren't primitive brutes scraping sparks out of luck. They were deliberate, skilled, and methodical. Their survival depended on fire more than any other human species before or after them, because they lived in the coldest climates our ancestors ever faced. And the tools were not metal. They didn't have flint and steel kits. They didn't have magnesium rods. They didn't have the luxury of dry storage boxes. Yet they built fires so reliably that hearths in their caves burned in the same spots for generations. When scientists excavate their shelters, they find layers of ash stacked like tree rings. That kind of consistency does not come from trial and error. It comes from a fire method so well practiced that it survived thousands of years and still works for anyone with the patience to learn it. What makes this story even more compelling is that modern survivalists rarely talk about it. Most people focus on bow drills, ferro rods, or lighter hacks. But before all of that, Neanderthals used a fire-starting system based on rock chemistry, fungus storage, and ember preservation. And what they discovered remains one of the most reliable low-tech fire techniques in existence. Today, we're diving into exactly how it worked and how you can replicate the same process with materials you can still gather in the wild. So, Neanderthals, you know, used pyrite and flint to generate these extremely hot sparks. While, um, most people associate prehistoric firemaking with striking flint against steel, the Neanderthal method actually used a different combination, flint and pyrite. When struck together, pyrite produced sparks much hotter than those from typical flint steel kits. And, since pyrite breaks apart easily, the friction dumped small glowing fragments instead of just weak surface sparks. This clever approach allowed those early humans to ignite tinder that honestly modern firemakers often struggle with. So, the practical takeaway here is that you can still use this method today. Pyrite isn't rare, and, well, flint or chert is pretty common in many regions. The technique itself is actually quite straightforward. You just hold the pyrite in one hand and the flint in the other. Then, strike the flint downward so it shaves these tiny bits off the pyrite. Those small fragments, they ignite instantly thanks to the iron sulphide composition. And if you hit at just the right angle, the sparks will fall directly into your tinder bundle. It does take a bit of practice, but once you've mastered it, the spark quality is honestly stronger than many modern ferro rods, especially in damp conditions. Their true advantage, though, came from mastering a tinder that caught sparks effortlessly. The secret to Neanderthal firemaking isn't just the tools, you know. Their real advantage came from the material they used to catch sparks. Amadou, a felt-like substance taken from the tinder fungus Fomes fomentarius. It grows on dead birch and beech trees forming these woody shelves along the trunk. When it's properly prepared, Amadou catches a spark and holds a glowing ember, longer than almost any natural material out there. So, to use this method today, you begin by cutting thin strips from the inner spongy layer of the fungus. Traditionally, these strips were pounded until they softened, you know. Some cultures soak them in natural solutions like urine or wood ash to increase absorbency. But honestly, simple pounding works well enough. Once dry, 
Amadou becomes a tinder that ignites easily from even weak sparks. If you're out in the woods and want to experiment, just find a tinder fungus shelf slice off the interior and prepare a small piece. Place it under your pyrite and flint strike zone, and the first successful spark will embed itself and begin glowing immediately. One of the most overlooked aspects of ancient firecraft is fire transport. You know, Neanderthals did not start a fresh fire every single time they needed one. Instead, they carried slow-burning embers using things like fungus or bark, making sure they always had a heat source ready to go. That's actually why hearths stayed active for such long periods, even on days when the weather was absolutely terrible. Anyone today, really, can replicate this by using amadou or punk wood to carry an ember. Once you've got a piece glowing, just place it inside a small container, like a wooden bowl, some hollowed bark, or even a metal tin. You'll want to limit the airflow so it smoulders, instead of burning up quickly. If you carry it carefully, an ember can last for hours. This is incredibly handy during long outings, especially when fire-starting materials might be scarce or, well, soaking wet. Having a glowing ember on hand means you don't have to start from scratch every time you set up camp. So, the Neanderthal fire trick works because it respects the relationship between heat, air and fuel. You see, it's all about maintaining that delicate balance, really. Modern fire kits make us forget that fire is, well, a balance. Neanderthals couldn't rely on shortcuts, so their method really honed the fundamentals. Their sparks were hot, but, you know, brief. Their tinder was soft, but durable. Their ember transport maintained heat, while avoiding full combustion. Everything worked because they understood how to manage each phase of fire, not because they relied on a single tool. You can actually apply this to your own survival practice by focusing on your tinder first instead of the spark source. A well-prepared tinder bundle soft fibres, gradual thickness, and a core of ember-friendly material does more for fire success than any expensive rod or striker. If you build it correctly, even a marginal spark will grow into a flame. The Neanderthal fire trick is, well, more than a relic. It's a reminder that the simplest tools, used with skill and patience, outperform shortcuts every time. Whether you're a historian drawn to ancient craftsmanship or a survivalist sharpening your skill set, mastering this technique connects you directly to one of humanity's oldest and most reliable fire traditions. If this guide helped you learn something valuable, make sure to subscribe to the channel, share the video with fellow enthusiasts, and help keep this knowledge alive.